If you often forget to water your indoor plants, or sometimes water them too much, then you need to make yourself a soil moisture monitor. This Arduino-based battery-powered monitor uses a capacitive sensor to measure the moisture level of the soil it's tuck into, and then flashes LEDs and provides an OLED display reader telling you whether you're over or under watering your plant. Two potentiometers on the monitor allow you to set a maximum and minimum moisture level, which then activate either a red LED on a low moisture level to tell you that you need to water your plant, or a yellow LED on a high moisture level to tell you that you're overwatering your plant. You can also push the button next to the display to turn on the OLED display and to see the exact moisture level as well as the two set points. I started out by designing the circuit to be made into a PCB. There are a few external components to this monitor, so a PCB helps to make assembly easy with fewer loose wires and makes the monitor into a more robust device which can be mounted onto the moisture sensor spark. I ordered the boards from PCBWay, which charges only $5 for 5 basic PCBs up to 100 by 100 mm They were manufactured and shipped out after just 3 days and arrived in less than a week. I was also really happy with the quality of the boards. I'd really recommend trying them out for your own PCBs. I've put links to my PCB files, which you can order from PCBWay if you'd like to try build your own moisture monitor. I've also put links to all of the components you need in the video description. The board is designed for a 3.3V Arduino Pro Mini, to be run on a single 18650 lithium battery. But you can also use a 5V Pro Mini, you'll just need to change the value of the LED resistors. Let's get started assembling the board. If your Arduino Pro Mini came without the header pins attached, you'll need to start by attaching them. Also remember that this design needs the two analog pins, A4 and A5, to communicate with the OLED display, so don't forget to add these pins as well. Once you're done, use some side cutters to clip off the ends of the header pins to make the board more compact. I chose to power my monitor using a single 18650 lithium cell, mounted into one of these USB charging boards. You can use a different battery if you'd like, or power your monitor using a USB charger or power bank. To program the Arduino Pro Mini, you'll need to use a USB programmer. Plug jumpers between the programmer and the header strip, making sure that your programmer pins go to the correct Arduino pins, and that you use the correct voltage pin on the programmer. Now let's have a look at the code. We start by importing the libraries required for the OLED display and the low power mode. We then set up the display and create a display object. We then define the LED and sensor pin numbers, and then the wet and dry calibration set points. We define the button and analog input pin numbers, and finally variables to read in the analog inputs. We also have a counter which is used to flash the status LED once every 5 cycles. 
In the setup function, we start serial communication, which is used during setup to get the raw sensor values and set up the calibration. Then connect to the display and show a splash screen. We then clear the display and define the pin modes. The loop function is quite simple. We call a function to update the sensor and potentiometer readings, then check if the button has been pushed. If the button has been pushed, we then have a while loop which runs until the button is released again, which displays the soil moisture reading and the potentiometer set points, and then gets the updated input values. When the button is released, the OLED display is turned off again to save power, and the LED set points are then checked. If the soil moisture level is higher than the high set point, then the high LED is flashed. If the soil moisture level is lower than the low set point, then the low LED is flashed. We also have an if statement which flashes the status LED every 5 cycles, or around 40 seconds, to tell us that the monitor is still on. We then put the Arduino into a low power sleep for 8 seconds in order to save battery power and then increment the cycle counter. The update values function reads in the soil moisture level and then maps the reading between two calibration values to a moisture level between 0 and 100%. We also read in the two potentiometer set points and then map them to a 0 to 100% range and have checks to ensure that the low set point can't be set higher than the high set point and that the high set point can't be set lower than the low set point. You'll notice that there are a couple of low power mode lines which have been commented out. This current set point on a 33 volt Arduino Pro Micro draws around 8 to 10 milliamps, which means that a 4200 milliamp battery will last around 20 days before needing to be recharged. This can be extended by connecting the VCC pin on the sensor to the Arduino's digital IO pin 10, so that the sensor is only turned on during readings. The sensor alone draws about 5 milliamps, so turning it off for 8 seconds between readings dramatically increases the battery life. Another thing to do is to physically remove the Arduino's green power LED, or cut through the PCP trace to turn it off. This further saves a few milliamps, which allows this monitor to run for about 50 to 60 days on a single charge. Let's upload the code and see how it works. When powering it on, you should first see the splash screen, and then the display should turn off. Once off, you can push the button and then wait a few seconds for it to turn the display on again. You can then see the actual measured moisture level and the two set points. You'll need to calibrate the wet and dry set points by taking readings in air and then in a glass or jug of water, making sure that you don't submerge any of the components. You should see the moisture level go up if you put your hand around the sensor. Use a screwdriver to set the low and high set points on the two potentiometers. You'll notice that you can't set the high potentiometer lower than the low set point. And likewise you can't set the low set point to be higher than the high set point. Stick the sensor into the soil in your indoor plant making sure that the soil does not touch the electronics, and then leave it for a few seconds to stabilize. You should then get a soil moisture reading, and you can start setting the correct set points depending on the type of plant you have. I also made a simple acrylic faceplate to screw over the PCB to protect the electronic components. Let me know in the comment section if you've built your own soil moisture sensor and what you've used it for. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.